Welcome to Comic Power. I am your host, Comic Killer 72. Today we're doing a new segment called the Quick Flip. In comic book investing terminology, the quick flip normally means you have something for a very short period of time that you sell for a profit and had no intention of holding it for the long term. At my channel, I'm going to incorporate the phrase quick flip and make it mean real down and dirty, real fast information about this channel and other comic book news. And today we're going to do it in seven minutes, 20 seconds. Okay, now that you understand, let's go ahead and get right into it. Of course, the lead story is the going back and forth between Comcast and Disney over the right to buy Fox Studios. So Disney at first put up $52 billion in stock, Comcast countered with $60 billion in cash, and Disney has countered with a $71 billion offer of cash and stock. As comic book fans, we're glued to this story because we know that if Disney wins, they wind up getting the movie rights back to the X-Men franchise. So we'll get Wolverine, Cyclops, Storm, every mutant that ever lived will be in the MCU, which is currently being housed at Fox, as well as the Fantastic Four universe would come back to Marvel. And you also get Doctor Doom, Silver Surfer, and Galactus. All of that would be in the MCU and that would be mind blowing. But it's much bigger than that too, because whoever wins the bid for Fox is also going to get the Simpsons, Avatar, and the first three Star Wars, New Hope, Empire, and Return of the Jedi. I know technically they're four, five, and six, but they're one, two, and three to me. If you've been watching comic book channels that are saying this deal is final for the 71 billion, you are mistaken. And whoever told you that is too. This battle between Disney and Fox is basically like a big version of an eBay auction. And the prize is a Hulk 181 9.8 graded which by the way is valued at $22,000. And it's hit that level already on the eBay auction and there's two guys who are going back and forth at it. And instead of the price being 22K, it winds up selling for like $50,000. So Fox is the Hulk 181 of this thing. And at the end of the day, the deal is probably going to finish at around $100 billion. This is just ridiculous. And whoever wins, the government has to approve the deal. So. We're at least two years away from seeing the X-Men and the Fantastic Four in the MCU, assuming that Disney wins this thing in the end. But let's face it, Hulk fighting Wolverine in a live action movie is something that gives comic fans orgasms. Just thinking about it. So imagine if this actually happened. So you know what's next? Next up is the speculation pick of the week. And the pick of the week for June 27th, 2018 is going to be Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur number 34 from Marvel Comics. This comic has already been getting traction pre-sale and the buzz surrounding this is it's the first appearance of Princess Fisk. That's going to be the daughter of the Kingpin. There's two things at play here. Number one, the print runs on Moon Girl are minuscule. She sells like an indie around about 10,000 copies a month. And the other factor is she's been confirmed to be a animated cartoon in the future. So although the comic isn't selling very well, they're using it as source material to build up her supporting cast and Rose Gallery. The Moon Girl character is in human, so she's not tied up in any type of mutant stuff over at Fox. And the Kingpin universe is tied to Daredevil, which Marvel also owns, so they're free and clear on So this. definitely pick this up, especially if you can get it for cover price. The runner-up pick of the week is Charlie's Angels number one from Dynamite Entertainment. This is based on the characters of the original TV show that ran from 1976 to 1981. The biggest star of the franchise back in the day was the late Farrah Fawcett. She was one of the most iconic iconic model actresses of her day. And this image of her is very well known by everybody. The Charlie's Angels franchise was rebooted as a movie franchise in the early 2000s starring Cameron Diaz, Drew Barrymore, and Lucy Liu. The comic's gonna come with many different covers and it's gonna appeal to people outside of comics and the print run's probably gonna be low so it's worth picking up. Also look out for Wonder Woman number 49, especially the Jenny Frizen variant, which is gonna be the cover B. Jenny has been getting really famous for her cover B variant variants of Wonder Woman and Jenny make my list of one of the top 10 female artists in comics right now. That brings us to a new segment I created called Over Under, which has been very popular. This is where I pick one book I think is overvalued and another book I think is undervalued and why. First, the over, and that's going to be Marvel premiere number 15 from 1974, which is the first appearance of Iron Fist. This book is valued at $3,600 or 9.8. 
I don't think that Iron Fist has ever been that popular. I think he has a small cult following, but I don't think he has the mass appeal to be worth that type of cash. I understand that Marvel Premiere was a very low printed run book at the time they were putting it out. They were testing out new characters. Right now, Iron Fist, AKA Danny Rand, has the distinction of being the worst Netflix show that Marvel has put out. And once again, I got nothing against the character. Matt Fraction's run of the Immortal Iron Fist was classic, but $3,600 for his first appearance in 9.8, I'm not feeling that. Especially considering his live action appearance has not been well received. It should be around about $2,000 in my opinion. The undervalue is going to be Avengers Annual Number 10 from 1981. This is the first appearance of Rogue and 9.8 is only worth $230? That's it? I mean, this is Rogue. She's one of the most important and recognizable X-Men, especially from the animated series from the early 1990s. And she's got a very cool power. You know, she can absorb the power of anyone else into her. In her first appearance in Avengers Annual 10, she actually comes out as a villain. But Jim Lee later sexed up her image, put her in that tight green and gold outfit, and the rest is history. And only $230? You have to be kidding. People get this character tattooed on themselves. Of the female X-Men, probably only female. Phoenix and Storm is more popular than Rogue. And yes, just like with Iron Fist, the live action appearance of her was pretty weak, played by Anna Paquin. This was a Rogue that did not play up the sexy and was reluctant to use her powers, was always crying all the time. I don't want to use my powers, I don't want to use my powers. This is just another reason why Marvel film fans want to see Rogue and the X-Men back in the MCU so they can use characters like this correctly that Fox messed up. In saying that, the first appearance of Rogue should be valued at around about $600 in my opinion. A rebooted, sexier version with Marvel would make that happen real fast. You know the drill. Subscribe to this channel, give it a thumbs up, and share it on social media so others can learn about comic power. Once again, thank you to all my subscribers and viewers. It only gets better from here. Thank you.